What's up everyone? How's it going? Welcome to another video. So in this video, I want to talk to you about illness. Specifically, a unique illness, well, maybe not that unique, but at least one that I haven't had before, that I ended up developing this past week that actually knocked me out of work for every day of the week besides Monday. I've got Ollie and Kiki here to share the story with me, who I spend most of the week with. Now, I've got a notebook with me that I recorded some of the things about my sickness in, and I'm just going to basically take you through what my illness was, what I sort of did wrong that led to it being as bad as it was, and then the methodology, the various things that I did to help heal from that. These are things that I've learned from <coughs> many people, people like Dr. Dewyard of LifeSpa.com, um, Wim Hof, a couple others, just nutrients, like information from everywhere. But anyways, I'm going to share all this with you. Okay, so first things first. What actually was the disease? So, not disease, but illness. The main aspect of the illness was that I had very swollen lymph nodes. I don't know if you can still see, the left side was the worst, like here, here, and also right here. But generally that on both sides, as well as under both arms, and also on the hip joints, I had swollen lymph nodes. Now, lymph nodes, I can't remember how many there are in the body, it's either in the 20s or near like the hundreds. I can't remember the exact number, but the point is, there's more than you knew there were, probably. Now, they were swollen and they were also hard. I also had a fever, I was clammy, I had low energy, I had locked jaw because of the, the swollen and stiff lymph nodes. My whole neck, this whole area was really tight, stiff, and tense. It just hurt so badly. I couldn't, it hurt to chew, it hurt over my mouth. It really hurt to swallow. I mean, it was all I could do to eat food and even drink water. So I was battling dehydration throughout the whole thing too. Uh, let me see if I'm forgetting anything. I wasn't hacking up any phlegm until the very end. Not until, so this started on Monday night was when I started feeling symptoms after work Monday and then progressed through today's Saturday. I started feeling good yesterday. By good, I mean no longer sick, although still sore. My voice is actually still a little bit affected. Those of you who know me well might be able to hear that. Um, so that's where the actual sickness, that's what it looked like and what it felt like on a very high level. Now, as for how I actually got the sickness, there were a multitude of factors that led to that. So my mom had a much lighter version of this the weekend prior to me going to work Monday. Now, this hers was much less. However, she did still have the same thing. So I likely got it from her. Now, at that same time, I actually had a severely compromised immune system. And that's due to multiple reasons. One, sun exposure. That Saturday, I had spent a lot of time out in the sun and actually got sunburnt, which... which made my immune system less strong. Um, there are also a few other reasons which get more into how I've actually been living my life and also why I haven't been putting out as much content this summer. I haven't been on the ball this summer. I mean, sometimes it's okay when you go really hard and do things really well for a while and then kind of back off a bit. I've been in more of a catabasis, backing off a bit, but haven't really been doing that correctively and yeah, no excuses. So part of that was I, I was drinking this weekend. I've been smoking weed a little too, too often. Um, and because of that, both of those things led to a compromised immune system as well. Um, in addition to that, I actually hooked up with someone this weekend, which, I mean, it's fine. I enjoyed it. It was fun. But when, you, when I hook up with someone, when most people hook up with someone, you spend the night with them in bed. And then you wake up the next morning, you go home, you shower, you brush your teeth, all that. So what that means is you spend overnight without having brushed your teeth. Now, for me, I normally take really good care of my teeth. I definitely find, or my mouth as a whole, I find it to be really important. So that looks like flossing as well as tongue scraping and also brushing my teeth. And these are things that weren't done that night, which then lead to bacterial growth within the mouth. As a matter of fact, large amount of bacteria grow on the tongue without tongue scraping at all, just generally. So that was another factor that led to my compromised immune system. 
In addition to that, Monday night, even though I was feeling symptoms, I did something that I probably shouldn't have done that felt wrong with my gut at that time, but I went with it anyways. One thing that's good is I didn't smoke weed Monday because I was feeling sick, so that's a good thing. But it was a cold, I took a cold shower, which is normally something I'm a big fan of, but it's not great when you have an antibody, whether that be viral or bacterial, that's just banging around in your immune system. So I did that and it felt wrong, so I turned it off, but even those couple seconds just jolt my body in the wrong way. In addition to that, normally in order to moisturize my skin, if you can see I have a couple of dry spots right now because I haven't been doing this, but normally I'll put coconut oil on my skin. The reason I put coconut oil on my skin is because the, the layer of the saturated fat, first of all, the saturated fat is really good for my skin, but second of all, the layer of the fat actually helps retain moisture, which then allows my skin to be more hydrated. The problem with this is that it doesn't allow for effective sweating through all of my pores. Normally it's not an issue because normally I don't sweat a ton, but when my body's trying to generate a fever and sweat and move toxins at a high rate like it was Monday night, and I'm coated in coconut oil and don't let, and don't let that. When I'm coated in coconut oil and I don't let that happen because of the coconut oil, then my sickness gets worse. So all these factors led to me getting it and then led to it being exacerbated, which is what led to me being so sick. I mean, I was literally, I wish I had taken some footage I would show you, but I was, I was bedridden. I was knocked out. It was all I could do is sleep. My, you know what, here, I'll just get into this now. So what actually did it look like while I was sick? Oh, that was one thing I missed earlier. So one thing I didn't talk about was irregular sleep patterns. My sleep was way off. There was, it was all I could do to get two hours of solid sleep. I would nap once during the day, usually in the afternoon around two o'clock, and I would try and sleep from as early as 8 p.m. to as late as 9 a.m., but it would look more like sleep for an hour, wake up, try and hack or swallow some phlegm if my throat will let me do either of those sip water as much as I can before it starts to hurt again. Not start, but just get through as much pain as I can. This was bad. The reason I'm making this video, by the way, is so that if anyone happens to watch this video and gets into this sickness at any point in their lives that they learn from this, or even sickness in general, because I actually did take a lot of steps that I think helped mitigate the effects of it once it happened. And I want to share those with you and also make this an open discussion format so that if you have any ideas for relieving sickness that I do not know, which obviously you do because I don't know everything, especially not what you know, please share them with me and I'd like to share mine with you. So the things that I did to actually correct from this sickness. Um, the, there were a few main things, I'll run through those as I go into detail sporadically. So the first one would be eating a lot of fruit with some vegetables. Now my diet is completely different when I'm sick and when I'm healthy. When I'm healthy, my diet is something I could go into for a long time, but just to keep it brief, it's recently been 100% vegan, slightly less recently been about 95% vegan, and slightly less recently been about 99% vegan. That's about an eight month span for that. Now, um, but I, when I'm sick, I decrease my protein intake and I significantly increase the amount of fresh fruit that I'm eating. It provides me an immediate energy source. It's easy to chew, which was huge for me. I mean, I couldn't even, I literally couldn't even eat most. I'm still massaging it because it's still a little sore. Maybe it's a little bit of PTSD in me, but probably shouldn't throw that term around. Maybe it's just me being a little bit like sketched out about it still. But anyways, um, I also made a mistake while I was eating. One of the, so, I'm always, I've always been taught, or I've always, when looking online, read and watched and learned that it's really important to keep your calorie balance adequate in order to make sure that you're not deteriorating your own muscles. Now, while that's true outside of illness, illness is a whole other ball game is what I'm learning. And I learned that actually, while I was eating this high fruit diet on the first Tuesday and Wednesday, I was feeling great. I felt fine. I mean, obviously I felt horribly sick. But I felt like I was doing the right things, and my muscles weren't necessarily like weakening, or I mean, obviously I was weaker, but they weren't deteriorating. Now, on Thursday, I decided that because of this calorie balance idea that I had in mind, 
I was going to get a large calorie meal that was still relatively healthy. It was a Thai curry, a tofu green curry with vegetables sporadically through it, as well as I ordered brown rice, but they gave me white rice. So I had that. Now, the issue with that was that it was not fresh fruit. And although it's still kind of a healthier, cheap meal, it did not feel good. I felt lethargic. I felt like I had slowed down my healing process and that it wasn't something that my body wanted. Now I'm actually taking a learning lesson from this long term and I'm going to eat more fruit and eat less hearty meals even if that means a lower calorie intake because to be honest I think calories are something that we've created. Well I'm developing this theory. I'm not set on it. Kiki just came down next to me. But I feel as if calories are not 100% accurate necessarily. I mean, obviously there's good calories and bad calories, but even more so, I feel like I can feel very healthy off of as little as 800 calories in a day depending on what I eat, and I can feel absolutely disgusting off of an adequate 2,000. Even if that's relatively healthy food, like that curry I talked about earlier. So that's the food aspect of it. Now as for water, water was very difficult on this, but that was definitely one of the main things I did to heal. So food, mainly fruit, also some vegetables. The goal is to focus on antioxidants and vitamins and things like that, while not necessarily worrying about calories. Water. Now water was really difficult, because again, I couldn't swallow. Now that said, I drank as much as I could. The trick for me was consistency and detachment. Detachment from pain was definitely a skill that I was able to practice during this. I learned that while my body is in pain, my perceiver or perception does not necessarily have to experience that pain. It simply has to observe it. Why do I feel like water worked? Now, I feel like water is really important for the body when it's healing, A, because of nervous system function. The nervous system doesn't move well with water, therefore it can't feel where things are painful, therefore it can't feel where it needs to send certain things, but also just because of fluidity. It can't send things effectively if it doesn't have adequate channels to do so. Also sleep. Sleep was another really important thing for me. So I, like I said earlier, I was taking naps. Um, the important thing that I switched up was using a pillow. Normally I don't use a pillow. I actually think that it's bad for the neck and I found that it leads to me having a stiff neck and having what looks like kyphosis as opposed to a long straight neck, which is hard to do when sitting cross-legged for me. But anyways, um, so I decided to use the pillow and sleep on, my, sleep on my side most of the time, alternate sides, even though I'm normally a sleep on my back, maybe slightly to the side sleeper. Um, the reason I was doing this is to elevate my head so that some of the lymph and mucus and everything could drain out of my head and move into the rest of my body where my body could actually work with it. Now I also had multiple optional blankets because heat regulation, like I talked about earlier with regards to the coconut oil, heat regulation for the body is very important and it also has a high variety to it when dealing with sickness. I noticed that I was too hot and too cold on and off sporadically throughout the night as I would wake up at these various intervals. So I had optional blankets with me. I had just a sheet, I had a middle blanket, and I had a top comforter, and I would flip them out so and so. Now here's a cool one. I used the Wim Hof method in order to speed up my recovery, and I found that to work immensely well. The Wim Hof method is something you could Google. It takes watching a couple videos and listening to a couple podcasts with him to really feel like you understand it 100%, but you could Google it, watch one video, and feel like you've got it down enough to try it out. The basis of it is that you take 30 to 40 inhales that are powerful deeply in on the way in, and then a release on the way out. They look like this. Wow, honestly, just three of those will wake you up a little bit. But anyways, I used the Wim Hof method in order to speed up my healing process. Wim, will go, so Wim Hof is a man from the Netherlands who developed this breathing method. It was, it, there's a large backstory to it. There's a great Vice documentary on him that you should totally go check out. But point being, 
there are many benefits associated with this. Also, that he goes off on mainly in the Joe Rogan podcast, but also in Tim Ferriss's podcast, and also in Rhonda Pot. Ma- huh, sorry, also in Rhonda Patrick's podcast. That's a tongue twister. Um, now I adapted the Wim Hof though for this illness. I found that because I was so sick, I was actually generating a lot of saliva during this. Now, in order to deal with that, what I did was put a pillow under my neck in order to raise my head, kind of like I was sleeping earlier, and then I would tilt my head to the side, although still lying flat on the ground. Normally, they'll teach it sitting, but I like lying flat on the ground. That's the yogi you need, the shavasana. It feels like I'm more aligned, more structurally integrated, and that my chi, lymph, blood, nerves, light, energy, everything in my body all flows better when I'm lying down. But anyway, so I prop my head up, tilt my head to one side, and then the other. I would do two sets, and I would go through the breathing method. It helps my lymphatic system, it helps my nervous system, and it helps my immune system. What I found when I did this, and this is really cool, is I could literally feel it. That's why I love this experiment and why I really wanted to share this with you in this video, is that I would feel the lymph nodes that were like seriously so like so large that it hurt to swallow the reason it hurt to swallow is because if you watch I can't even know what this part's called but the part that raises up here when you swallow that part would jam into them so much that it would like hit a wall of resistance and I could barely swallow and at the same time it would just hurt so badly it may have even been my tonsils as well not a doctor like Tim Ferriss says I don't pretend to be one on the internet that's cool I can say that now um Highly recommend doing the Wim Hof method if you ever feel sick. Great for your immune system. Great generally. I was doing it a lot during spring semester. It was part of my morning routine for a while as well. If you saw my morning, I'll I'll link up the morning routine video right here. But I love the Wim Hof method. After that, walking, light yoga, and foam rolling. When I'm sick, I want to lie down and do nothing. I know a lot of people feel that same way. That's actually how recovery is taught, or not taught, but that's the method that we are told to use or prescribed by doctors when we go to the office and say that we're sick. They say, oh, take these meds and lie in your bed. I don't think that works. I don't think that's an effective flow of lymph, which is the body's way of detoxing, and I don't think that's an effective flow of immune cells throughout the body. What I did instead was, and Thank goodness I have these little guys, this little kiki below me. I would take them for walks throughout the day, which would help essentially move the lymph throughout my body. At the same time, I would do light yoga. Nothing crazy, like going to do a core power class or something. But I would do a couple of downward dogs, some, some light pigeon poses, which is an adapted pigeon where instead of going down frontally, you come in from the side so you can gauge how much you're actually going to go into it. Light hip opener is all you really need to think of from there. And also a lot of happy baby. I would do a lot of yoga poses on my back where the goal was to straighten out my spine in order to counteract the negative effects on my posture of sitting for so long. Because I did spend a majority of the day sitting in a recliner like the one behind me and just relaxing because that is so important. Not necessarily watching videos on my phone or on my laptop or something like that or interacting on social media although I did do a fair amount of that to be honest more than I ideally would have for my recovery but the main thing that I tried to do was simply sit eyes open or eyes closed being present with my mind being present with my body and being present with the flow of energy through the areas that felt healthy and the areas that felt sick I feel that by doing this, even now, I can set, like it's, we have great control over our bodies. We really do. There's more that studies that need to be done on this, and Wim Hof talks about these things. But the idea is that when I spend more time allowing my body to instead of focus, instead of directing its focus externally to direct its focus internally, It's able to focus more internally, and then it's able to focus more on healing itself and realize, oh, I could do this here. Oh, I could optimize this process by doing it this way, and things are done more effectively. At least that's what I felt. So that's why I spent time like that. At the same time, the light foam rolling also helped because there are certain areas such as the kidneys or the spleen, which is a big player in the lymphatic system, that need to be kind of wrung out a little bit like a damp towel or swimsuit that just... 
I can't get to with a stretch because a stretch elongates a muscle. And there are some twists and binds you can do with yoga, but you really need to be kind of warmed up and already in a structurally safe position, tension-wise, to be able to handle those, some of them. And so I would hop on a foam roller. I would start at the top of my head, work my way down my spine. I'd also go from the elbow down the side, elbow down the side, and even go from here down this way, rotating on it in order to get into the rib cage. Again, remember, the body's lined with lymph nodes and also getting through the gut as well because there's a lot of immune function that goes on within the gut. I'm sorry that I don't know more about these things. I hope that you're willing to Google them to find out more in depth, but this is as in-depth as I can go and as I will go for the sake of brevity within this video. Now the final thing that I want to talk about and something that actually I really do hope that you all try, although it is, no, it's actually not even difficult. You know, this is actually a pitch, but at the same time, I really hope you all try this. If you haven't heard of CBDs, you need to have heard of CBDs. And I'm glad that you're finally hearing about CBDs. CBDs stand, CBD stands for cannabidiol. It's, a, it's an aspect of the marijuana or hemp plant. Actually, it comes from industrial hemp, the way it's derived for this process that actually has a lot of the healing benefits associated with weed or cannabis. So there, are the basic way that it's been explained to me, and again, very basic, there are people who know a lot more about this than I do, is that there's THC and there's CBD. And then there's also a plethora of other cannabinoids that are within the plant that all, the THC is what gets you stoned, and the cannabinoids, CBD included, and primarily focused upon, are the ones that are associated with all the health benefits of, smoke, of cannabis. Now, I could go off on the benefits of CBD, but instead I will just talk about my own experience because that's A, legally how it's allowed to be done, and B, I think that's the most effective way of doing it and most true way of, ex of expressing this. Now, when I use the CBDs, what I found is that these rock hard lymph nodes and things became much softer, similar to the Wim Hof method. If I didn't mention that earlier, that was the thing I noticed with the Wim Hof method is that all of my lymph nodes and things became much more soft and supple as if they were being worked through from the inside. CBDs had that same effect. These were the only two things that I really noticed had that same sort of effect where they, I could, like before and after, just directly, it went from being rock hard to like, oh, I can kind of feel how that's moving a little bit. And then I'd massage it and it would kind of work through and move into my body and my body would handle it. It's all the body. The body's always handling it. It's not moving in or out of the body. Until I hacked phlegm up, which happened on Thursday, which was good. And then also Friday, and I guess a little bit today. But the phlegm definitely came on the later half of the illness. The death, essentially, was the first half, where it was a real battle, and it was a question whether or not I was gonna go into the hospital, because it was, it was a difficult illness to get through. Those of you who if you're still watching, I hope you are. Those of you who work with me at Zayo know that I was out for this whole week and I really don't like to miss work. Unfortunately, my boss doesn't have any work for me this weekend, but fortunately that gives me the time to share this with you. Now, the CBD application that I actually used looked like this. I, so the frequency was about four times a day. The dosage, normally when I take CBDs, which are great for me for focus, for calmness for openness to various experiences for having effective resets when things go wrong during the day for coming from a place of presence and joy for I mean it just makes you feel great but not stoned like even more alert and focused and ready I'll take them on days where I need to crush studying or on days where I need to kill exams during the year but that's only about 10 milligrams I was taking anywhere from 40 or 50 to upwards of 300 milligrams a day during this illness. The reason is because there's something in the body called the endocannabinoid system, Google that, that is, I guess, paired with sort of mirrors, again, I don't know this well, the lymphatic system. Now, again, I'll say this one more time. I don't understand the science behind this 100%, but I offer my own experience to you. It made me feel a lot better when I did this. It made my illness feel like it was going away as opposed to getting worse instantly.
and each time I took it, it felt better. The way I applied it were two methods. One, I have a CBD cream that I would apply externally, and that would look like applying it to the lymph nodes, both I'm touching this bag area here, all the way from the base of the skull down to around the shoulder girl area, and then all the way through here. Basically, that whole neck area would get applied to, underarms would get applied, middle rib cage right down here would get applied, and I would also get that those lymph nodes that I talked about earlier in my hips as well. Also, the base of the feet, where there's a lot of lymphatic mirroring and mirroring of the body as well. Uh, what's the, it's reflexology. Search reflexology if you want to understand how the foot mirrors the various organs of the body. Now, I would also take a tincture in addition to the cream. The tincture is simply just an oil dropper that's the much higher dose than the cream that I would take after flossing and scraping my tongue. Hmm. Get rid of bacteria. By the way, get a copper tongue scraper off of lifespa.com. That's Dr. John Duyard. You should really do that. That's It's so healthy. I'll talk about that in a minute after I finish talking about CBDs. Um, so the CBD tincture, I would, play, I would place it under my tongue. It would absorb through my freshly flossed gums into my nervous system, into my lymphatic system from there, and go directly down from my jaw to my neck. That's the idea. Is you want it to be as close as possible directly there. I would also go, I would also apply the oil dropper to my eyes and up my nose as well. I, again, I'm sharing my experience here. Instant success. Instant better feeling. Take me from a, take me from a, no, I really can't swallow right now. This is like a nine or a nine and a half every time I swallow to like, all right, I can detach from this. So I'll allow my body to go through the pain and I won't shudder as much when I do this. Maybe more like a seven. And then I would get through it. And I got through it. So that was the CBDs, the Wim Hof. Those are the two main things that I used to get through the illness. Now I'll touch on the Life Spa tongue scraping again, because that was another thing I did. Bacteria growth on the tongue is actually a problem that is not treated by most people. Most people floss their teeth if they're good about it. No, most people just brush. If that. The next group of people are people that actually floss and brush. And then the really good group of people are the people that floss, scrape their tongue, brush again, brush their tongue, and scrape their tongue again. The tongue generates so much bacterial growth. Now, I'm simply going to ask you to please search John Duyard or Life Spa Tongue, and you will find his video about copper tongue scrapers. Now, copper is really cool because it's naturally antibacterial. There was a study done, and he talks about it in the video as well, where just by having copper in the room, they were able to lower the bacterial content within the room significant, significantly. And these were the bad bacteria, things like strep and like... His video explains it better. But the point is, copper, great for antibacterial purposes, including scraping your tongue. So is charcoal, conveniently. So... This has definitely been a rant. I did as best as I could, even made the notes that I could keep this brief and somewhat directed. This was my illness. This was how I think that I made it worse and how I think I really, really like, kind of annihilated my immune system directly prior. I mean, I definitely had this coming. I actually think it was the universe sending me a sign that I was living life sort of out of whack and needed to realign myself, which I am in the process of doing and then also how I went through the sickness and various health practices that I integrate into my own life, both regularly and also in an increasing fashion in order to heal from various illnesses. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video. I hope you've enjoyed my rant. Peace.